Get in the fast lane, Grandma. Sports and that is about to start. Two perfect games in the major leagues this season have provided perfect theater. But nothing yet in baseball has matched the game between the Pirates and the Braves in Milwaukee on May 26, 1959. The drama rings from the voice of Bob Prince. He and his sidekick, Jim Woods, had witnessed Harvey Haddix retiring the first 26 batters in order. That set the stage. Anything that Jim and I have witnessed in this season absolutely at this moment pales into insignificance. And we have had some thumpers. Superstition dictates that nobody can mention a no-hitter or a perfect game while it's in progress, lest the gem be jinxed. And given the fact that Prince was quite loquacious, the tension had coiled inside the gunner like a spring. But when Haddock's fanned mound opponent Lou Burdett for the 27th out, Prince announced it to the world. The one-two pitch. Stuck him out swinging. Haddock's pitches a perfect nine inning, no hit, no run game. Standing ovation. This drama survives because someone at KDKA, which carried the game, started recording with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The moment was preserved on a wax disc that has since been digitized. But the game wasn't over because the Pirates had been held scoreless. Their best chance to score was a long drive by Bob Skinner in the seventh inning that was held up by the wind and caught by Henry Aaron. It was indeed a dark and stormy night, or as Jim Woods, the possum, said in retrospect, When his fly ball, the deep right, when we had the tornado gale blowing, which is not blowing right now, ball was right at the fence, Aaron went to the fence and then had to come in to make the catch, but Henry himself thought it was out of there, and you could see it caught in a downdraft and just dropped right down on his ground. Blind to Adcock, two out. Haddix remained perfect through the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. He was in uncharted territory. Jim Woods described a defensive play by Don Hoke for the 36th out. Do up next. Here's the 2-2 pitch for Death Swing. Ground ball into the hole. Picked up by Hoke. Throw the first. He got him! 36 in a row for Haddix. Don Hoke way over to his left. And if he doesn't get it, I doubt if Schofield can make the play. It's that deep into the hole if it gets by Hope. But Don went over and practically got the ball in behind him with his gloved hand. Then had to make at least a half pivot and fired an Nelson in time to get Burdett by a step and make it 36 in a row for Haddock. Prince was left speechless by what he was seeing. I have uh, run out of adjectives. As a witness to history, Prince announced he would keep a souvenir. I have a scorecard here that is going to be autographed for the first time in my life. I've ever asked ball players to autograph it. They're going to autograph this one, including the Braves. The 0-1. Christopher Afal, left side 0-2. I'm going to have them write their names in right in the position. Jim, I think I'd like to frame this one and keep it. The strain of calling a perfect game? Prince let the audience know about his own vocal cords. And the voice growing weaker and weaker under the tremendous pounding given it in the onslaught of the record book by Haddix. The pitch to Burden, down ball, down second base, Mantilla comes up, throws out Adcock, we're out. Perfection ended in the bottom of the 13th when Felix Mantilla reached base on Don Hoke's throwing error. Mantilla, bouncing ball to Hoke, comes up on the big hop from third, throws into the dirt, the ball is dropped. And the throw is now to Nelson by Burgess and a tag of Mantilla, no ruling there. They're appealing that Mantilla made a turn as though to go to second base. So the players have their first base runner in Mantilla. An error is charged and we'll see to whom. There isn't anybody right now sicker at this moment than Don Hook, I guarantee you that. He's crushed over this. A sacrifice bunt and an intentional walk to Henry Aaron preceded the only hit Haddix gave up, a high slider launched out of the ballpark by Joe Adcock.
Here's the pitch. There's a fly ball deep right center. That ball may be on through and over everything. It is done. Hold on. Absolutely fantastic. But the ending was as muddied as Haddock's had been perfect. Mantia scored, but Aaron ran to the dugout and Adcock passed him on the base paths. Prince described the confusion. Wait a minute. Brett Haney coming out. What are they signals? Adcock goes back and touches third. Now he's going back to touch second. He apparently missed the base. Let's see what they're going to call here. Now Adcock has touched third and comes on around again. It was clear Haddocks and the Pirates had lost, but it wasn't until the next morning that the National League office ruled Adcock's hit a double and the official score was one to nothing. In his recap, Prince said, And if ever any guy deserved a win, it had to be Haddocks. And in the case, in this case, and I mean it in the course of most complimentary matter, the loser would have had to have been Burdett. He gave up 12 hits and wins either one nothing or 3 nothing, and we're awaiting a ruling on a one-hitter by Haddock. Absolutely, utterly fantastic. Well, that was the ball game and the broadcast. The Lords of Baseball have since determined it is not among the 22 perfect games in Major League history because Haddock surrendered a hit that cost him the game. But it remains pure theater with a flawed ending to the greatest pitching performance ever. And you have been a beautiful audience. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Haddock can never lose a more heartbreaking ball game. An error beat him. He pitches a perfect no-hit, no-run game through 12 innings. And a leadoff error comes on to take him.